What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for December 18th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. It is a game day edition. We have a lot to get to with the Eagles, but first, as always, let's start with our question of the day recap. Yesterday, I asked you who was the greatest sixer or who is the greatest sixer of all time not named Wilt Chamberlain. And with 44% of the vote, you said it was Dr. J, followed by AI, then Charles, and then Moses. As always, thank you for participating. I'm loving, like, the, the numbers are just increasing, so I love it. Thank you. Be sure to get your voice or your text message heard. Use that voice and text line 267-495-8531. That's 267-495-8531. Have your voice heard and thank you again for your participation. And again, I'm still open for name suggestions for that. I just don't know which way to go with it, but uh, we'll get there. All right. Don't forget about the new Back to the Future. Just a little housekeeping on her mcgee almost like a bonus advent calendar gift for you guys check that out back to the future wherever you get your podcast as well as on youtube sticking with our 25 days of kindness today as you go into work you're going around and it's it probably is a shorter week for everyone go up to someone you usually don't talk to and talk with them whether it's uh, somebody in a different department, someone you're just not close with, whatever. Go talk to to somebody at work that you usually don't talk to. You don't know what people are going through in the holidays. Might make them uh, feel a little bit better about their day. Uh, I try to do this a lot with my teachers too. Uh, there's certain teachers who you just naturally, I mean, it, it's like this with any job. You just get along better with certain people and. Um, Some people need a little bit more assistance than others, so you're talking to them more. But I I do have a group that sometimes I have to reach out and just check on them to make sure things are going well, just see how they're doing. But just go up to someone you haven't talked to in a while or usually don't talk to at work, see how they're doing, kind of make their day. It's a wonky week for for work uh, for everyone. I mean, everybody, and I don't know how much is going to get done this week because everybody's focus is everywhere else but it's the least you could do is just go up say hello to someone you usually don't talk to last call for the food drive uh they can still take some donations this week if you want to get over to the maddie and dixon i am going over later today with one last big we had less uh donation come in uh that i want to make sure gets over there in time for the holidays uh but again you can always go to their website the maddie and dixon community cover and donate uh right through their uh, website as well all right no big flyers news but i saw some articles that are starting to question whether or not they should be buyers or sellers at the trade deadline and if you would asked anyone three months ago they definitely would be sellers trying to accumulate draft picks but now they're they're right there in the thick of the playoff race this far into the season it might be something that that we need to monitor as we go through january heading toward the all-star break uh but Good thing to let me know what you're thinking on the voice and text line. Uh, Should the Flyers be buyers or sellers? Uh, And sticking with the trade deadline theme, I saw something that I thought was interesting about the Sixers. And obviously they're playing lights out. Obviously they're playing inferior teams right now too. So let's take that with a grain of salt. But the execution and they're doing what they should be doing. And the question was, should they go out and get a third big star or should they get more complimentary pieces for Joel and Tyrese? And it was an interesting kind of scenario. And I'm not sure which way I go. I, I think it depends on what offers are out there. I would say somebody like a like a Tobias Harris is playing well right now. And he's in a contract year. So I don't know if you can maybe get something for him in return. I, there's just so many moving pieces. And I'm glad I'm not making these decisions but it's again it's one of those things that i think is worth having a discussion about and if it was an eagles game day we probably would spend way more time on this uh but it, let me know what you're thinking on the text and voice line about the sixers as well like what should they do and it's probably still too early to tell for both the flyers and the sixers uh as it isn't christmas yet usually a lot of those talks will gear up after the new year heading into uh, both of their all-star breaks usually are in early february so right around then is when you start getting and and i think the trade deadlines are around there too uh but let me know what you're thinking 
excuse me, which way should should they go with that? Uh, but at, for the Flyers, I, I th- for both of them, I guess, it's still way early to tell. I, and I do think for the Sixers, they need to kind of build a team that can get past the Celtics. Um, so whether that is with role players that can play defense and uh, play, eat up some fouls on Jason Tatum, maybe, and Jalen Brown. But I, I, I just don't know which way to go yet. Uh, but that, unfortunately, should be, as it always is when the Sixers are good, should be your focus is trying to get past the Celtics. All right. PhillyGoat.com has you covered when it comes to all of your Philly – apparel needs whether it's sixers flyers eagles phillies union philly centric they have philly boxing philly pride you name it they got it go check them out it's a great great online apparel store for all your philly sports needs go there now use the promo code jim montgomery for 10 percent off of your order get get your flyers gear now i've been telling you for for weeks now to to jump in on them early uh get your stuff for the eagles playoff hopefully playoff run uh, Sixers trade deadline, whatever you need, they have. Go check them out. Phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's Phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. All right. Eagles. And I, I got to be honest, I, uh, I I don't know which way to go. I, as of right now, I've been going back and forth all morning. I, I don't know what to make of this game. I don't know what I, I don't know. So there's so many things at play. So when the news came about Matt Patricia taking over for Sean Desai, I mean it is like a, a big shocking move. Um, I think more so shocking, not that they made the switch, but they they're keeping Desai on staff. That to me just seems I don't know a little odd. However, I mean it. It is what it is. Part of me is like, I like this because of what Matt Patricia was able to do with the Patriots. The other part of me is like, well, if he was there in the building, like was there's, there's so many more questions than answers because if he was in the building and he's giving Desai advice and Desai's not taking it, then that's one thing. But if he's been a part of the, the game planning as is, I mean, I don't know what's going to be different. Maybe he can get uh, maximize uh, with working under Bill, all those years under Bill Belichick. Maybe he can maximize and put these guys in a position, change the scheme up to kind of mask some of the issues we have at linebacker and cornerback. The other it, thing that goes into this is I, I just, I mean, he was offensive coordinator last year. I, there's just so many more questions than answers when it comes to this. Uh, and then mysteriously, Darius Slay got his arthroscopic knee surgery this week. It happens to be the same week that Matt Patricia's taking over as a defense coordinator. And we all know that despite what they both said, they don't like each other. So I wonder, and this is purely speculation. I have no inside information or anything. And this is just me kind of connecting dots because there's so many questions that come up with this move. Are the two related? Is it related that Darius Slay waits until the the biggest five games of the season now at this point for the Eagles to get this surgery? Happens to be the same that Matt Patricia takes over and they don't like. I, so I don't know. Um, the whole Jalen Hurts, I I don't I don't think there's any way he doesn't play. Um, like it, obviously it's not COVID, I would think, because he would have. To, I, although I don't know. It's just the fact that it got worse. I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, is he sick um, that bad that he's not going to be able to play? I mean, he he flew out there. I think the fact that he flew out there pretty much means I think he's going to play. How effective he's going to be, I don't know. I. And again, I keep going back and forth on it. Uh, right now, the spread is the Eagles are. Are still minus three. At one point, that spread went down to minus two. The fact that it's back up to three almost leads me to believe that Hertz will play. Um, and I still very novice with the the movement of lines and things like that. But the fact that you saw it go down and then it went back up means I, I think he's probably going to play. Or a ton of people came in and took the 
the Eagles minus two, so they move the linebacker. I don't know. The, the, the total is 45. I, I just don't know what to expect. I mean, I feel as though it's the Cowboys game yesterday showed me a lot. The fact that you can look so good one week and so bad the next week. There's no way, and, and this is I'm willing to stand on this, this die on this hill. There's no way they're going to come out and look as bad as they did against the Niners and Cowboys this week in Seattle. Um, and if they do, then we have way larger issues than who's defensive coordinator and if Jalen Hurts is sick. Um, with that, all that being said, um, I, I just can't see them losing this game. This is the last game of the gauntlet going into it. I think with all the, the adversity and the turmoil and the fact that everybody apparently was bickering, that, like, so much drama going in. I think this game can't come soon enough for the players. I, I do think they're still a good team. Um, this isn't like uh, a Rich Kotite led team that went 7-2 and two and then lost out. This isn't uh, the Doug Peterson team that uh, with Wentz and things like that. This is a good team. I think they're going to put it all beside and they're going to get it together. Uh, I do think they'll find a way to win this game. I like it at three. I don't like it at three and a half. We're taking the Eagles officially. Eagles minus three. Somehow, some way, they get it done. There's a lot of pride in that locker room. A lot of veterans. I think all said and done, they're going to get it together. Shut out all the background noise. I think the defense will respond to Matt Patricia if for no other reason. He's got a ton of experience with good teams. Uh, and if you think about sometimes those Patriots defenses, I know he wasn't necessarily there, um, but at one point they were playing Troy Brown as a cornerback. So, I mean, he, this guy has learned a lot from Bill Belichick, and I think the guys are going to respect that. I think they're going to respond. I think you're going to see a more inspired team all the way around. And truthfully, with the flu, even though Jordan had the food poisoning, and it's ironic that Hurts is signed by the Jordan brand. I think we see a very focused Jalen Hurts tonight. I think the fact that he is sick could play to our benefit because it could kind of slow things down for him. It's going to force them to run the ball more. Uh, and I think they're going to control the clock. And, and it's time to let let the d offensive linemen do what they do best. Just let them go out and hit somebody. And I just... I can't see them losing this game. So we're going to take it officially. Eagles minus three. Uh, we're 9-7-1 and one on the season, so we're still slightly profitable. But we'll take the Eagles minus the three against the Seahawks tonight. Now, with all of the, the move on the defensive side of the ball, one thing I did see, it was an interesting article, and I don't necessarily hate it, is they were throwing out names for potential defensive coordinator replacements. Obviously, this wouldn't be until after the offseason, but Al Harris's name, who is the defensive backs coach in Dallas, uh, was an interesting name. Just the, the list of guys he worked with. Uh, yeah, that Al Harris that played here uh, in Philly. Um, always liked Al, uh, but it's something, a name worth, worth monitoring. And I think um, there's going to be a lot of calls for getting someone in here with a ton of experience. But I think what he's done and where we are, we have young young guys in the defensive backfield. We have Eli Ricks, Keely Ringo, and I think that's going to be the key tonight too. Like I'm looking forward to seeing them really step up and do something tonight. Um, but just a, a name to watch, a name to, mo excuse me, name to monitor going forward is Al Harris. All right, be sure it's still not too late to check out my boys over the Clashing Conferences podcast. Dallas, the Giants, and Washington all lost. And see if the Eagles can save face for the NFC East today. But check them out. The Clashing Conferences podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. All right, today we're going to go back to 1954. And on this day, December 18th in 1954, Temple's men's basketball team traveled down to Kentucky to take on the number two Wildcats. Uh, they, they made a run at it in the second half, but they lost 79-61. This was conduct Kentucky's 28th straight win. Uh, junior Hal Lear led the Owls with 23. Um, the Owls that year under Coach Harry Litwack went 11-10. Didn't make it into the tournament. However, 
They were or about to embark on a three-year stretch that started that following year where they made it to two Final Fours in three years. Um, <clears throat> led by Hal Lear, uh, the, the next year, uh, he was the most outstanding player in the tournament in 1956. His number six is retired by the Temple Owls, uh, one of the best to ever do it. Uh, had a cup of coffee in the NBA with the Warriors, but then played... Um, I forget one of the other leagues at the time. It's just kind of a victim of uh, the NBA just being in its infant stages. But on this day, 1954, excuse me, Temple went down to Kentucky and lost 79-61 against the number two Wildcats. However, big things were on the horizon for the Owls as they would make it to the Final Four in two of the next three years. Uh, One year led by Hal Greer um, and I think, or Hal Lear, I'm sorry, uh, and then for... I forget who who the other. Uh, I think Mil, Bill McVie, uh was the guy who led them the following year. But on this day, they lost to Kentucky seventy nine sixty one. Sticking with basketball, our Philly sports advent calendar gift of the day. We open up the door, and we have Harvey Pollock. Harvey Pollock was a Camden, New Jersey native and Temple grab, World War II veteran. Uh, became a sports writer for the Philadelphia Evening Bulletin. Uh, Then he took a job as the assistant publicity director for the Warriors as soon as the the Philadelphia Warriors became a team in the NBA. Um, And then they were in, or before they became in the NBA, they were in the Association of American Basketball, I think was the league. They merged with the NBA. So uh, he was in the NBA since day one. Uh, Then he became the head of media, media relations And then when the Warriors moved to San Francisco, he didn't want to leave, so he took some odd jobs in the NBA. Once the Sixers moved to Philadelphia, he took very similar jobs with the the media relations and everything with the Sixers. Uh, He worked with the Sixers until 1987-88. And then after that, he became the director of statistician or statistical information. I'll get it out. Director of Statistical Information for the Sixers. Um, Basically, this dude was great with numbers. He kept meticulous notes, like he kept score of all the Warriors, all the Sixers games. Uh, He actually was, he kept score for Wilt's 100 point game. And since there was no press up in Hershey that day, except for Harvey Pollack, uh, he was the only reporter. So he had the exclusive story on that. And if you ever see the sign of Wilt Chamberlain holding the 100 points in that game, that sign was made by Harvey Pollack, uh, who was the media guy for, for the Warriors. Uh, but I think what Harvey Pollack is most known for is he created stats for the NBA. Nobody really kept track of block shots, steals, um, and, and things like that until he came along. And then he was the first to, to divide rebounds into offensive and defensive. Everything was just defensive. Uh, total rebound so he was like well wait a minute an offensive rebound is much different than a defensive rebound uh it is rumored that he came up with the term or coined the term for a triple double uh but there are some disputes for that um but he every offseason would take all his notes and scorecards from a game and compi- analyze them and compile them into a book uh, it was known as harvey pollock's nba statistical yearbook uh, and he would go like he was the first analytical guy way before people did analytics. But he would look at things like shot distance, um, who gets their shot blocked the most. He came up with a category called the working man. And that's you contribute to all categories, the five major ones without any fouls or turnovers. Um, the trillionaire club is somebody who plays but has zero across the board, just plays minutes, doesn't get a rebound, assist, just happens to be there. Uh, again, he was the first analytical guy. At one point, he claimed Wilt had a string of quadruple doubles, um, but there was no. Again, the NBA did not keep necessarily as meticulous of stats as they do now. Uh, he also said uh, there were games where, or a game where Wilt Chamberlain had double digits in all five of the primary categories: points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. Uh, which is just insane, but it was not. It's not an official thing because the NBA didn't keep it in his stats. But to me, if Harley Pollock, Harvey Pollock, has it written down because of just his track record, that means to me these things did happen. Uh, he's in the Big Five Hall of Fame. 
Uh, until his retirement, he was the only guy who uh, was the long, like the original employee of the NBA. Uh, he has a championship ring from all four pro basketball championships in Philadelphia. Two from the Warriors and two from the Sixers. He's in the Philadelphia Jewish Hall of Fame, the Temple Hall of Fame, the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. Just one of those under-the-radar guys that people might not even know exists, but because of some of the things he did statistically, he, his legacy will live on. Uh, so today's Philly Advent Sports Calendar gift is Harvey Pollack, who was just a statistician genius and really one of the first guys to break down analytics in a time when nobody really talked about analytics so that is your philly sports advent calendar gift of the day harvey pollock on this day back in 1954 the temple owls lost to number two kentucky 79 61 but good days were on the horizon in the next few years for the owls be sure to check out the clashing conferences Reluctantly, I am going to take the Eagles minus the three tonight. I'm not on a scale of one to five. I'm probably at about a three on this one. Um, just mainly because I've said it. I didn't think they were going to get blown out the way they did against the Cowboys last week. But I think they bounce back with all the turmoil. Because honestly, if they don't, the season's done. And I, I'm going to throw that out there. And then, uh, sorry to leave on a negative note like that. They lose this game, season over. I know mathematically with the schedule, I think there's just too much. It, it they're done, um, and, and and I'm sorry to say that. But the question of the day, as always on game days, let me know your predictions for the game. Also, let me know if I'm crazy. Are they done if they lose today? Um, so many things to get in on that text line for. Let me know what happens if the Eagles lose. Let me know your predictions. Uh, what should the Sixers and Flyers start thinking about doing at the trade deadline? 267-495-8531 is how you get in on the voice and text line. 267-495-8531. Let me know your thoughts. The rain is going to clear out eventually today. Hopefully that means it's sunshine and rainbows for the Eagles. It is game day. Try to get through your day. Try to get through your week at work. Uh, I know this is going to be a long one. Hopefully you got all your Christmas shopping done. But this has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Until next time, go Birds!